Hello and good morning, everybody. Hi, uh, it's Lucinda Berry. Hi, what are you doing? Are you, I had to sit there and go, wait a second, wait a second. I, I, I know that name. And then all of a sudden it's, it's you. You know, because what happens is, Lucinda, is that so many times you get you get directors and producers that call up and give you the rules. you got 10 minutes to talk and all that stuff. So all of a sudden I'm going, okay, she just said her name. Start talking, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi. It's me. Hey, congratulations on this book, One of Our Own. I mean, this, this really does hit on a subject that is very, I mean, it gets inside your heart and, and it, you know, but we don't ever see the real story of, of these people that dedicate their lives to, to, you know, to such a thing as this, which is the suicide prevention hotline. And then, and then right. you add the twist and that twist is a twist. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you liked it. It was a fun one. I'm sort of, yeah, I'm the queen of twists. So how, how does it that when, when you put a book like this together, how does it move through you? Because I mean, you're, you're bringing your emotions through those paragraphs. So obviously you have to feel it as well. Well, yes, but I do think um, just because of my background. So mm. I don't know what you know about my background, but I'm actually a former psychologist that specialized in trauma. So I am very, very desensitized in comparison to your average okay, okay. person, right? So the things I've seen, the things that I've experienced, um, what I've walked through with other people um, are some of the most horrific things that can happen to a person in real life. So when I'm telling a story and when I'm writing, I do um, come to it from that perspective and that place where I'm able to sit in really dark spaces, yeah. you know? So yeah. um, some of what I write um, and a lot of what I write gets pretty dark. And one of our own is one, you know, it uh, definitely is a dark thriller. Yeah. So, so do you know someone like Felicia? I mean, I mean, the, for for you to really bring Felicia together, you know, I know as a writer, I like to envision somebody and and to be able to bring them to life, and it's usually somebody that I know. Yeah, I mean, she's very loosely based on a former colleague of mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yeah, and then a lot of you know, a lot of the protocol. I mean, all of the protocol um, with the things that are happening at the center. Um, the stuff that happens afterwards when she's working with her, you know, all of that is pretty standard of anybody that's worked in mental health mm -hmm. um, and dealt with anyone that's in a crisis, you know. So and that's sort of the moral dilemma throughout the whole part, you know, is her professional side of her that, you know, has the moral and professional and ethical obligation. And then there's this you know, maternal part of her that has, you know, the desire to protect the people that she loves and cares about. Yeah, and that professional in her is challenged with the way that you write because th something happens and, and it could be somebody inside her family or somebody that she knows. I mean, to, to stay professional during this, oh my God, I mean, you can feel well, the she heartbeat. Yeah, and I mean, she breaks protocol, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the whole thing. A call comes into the suicide prevention um, hotline center and it's a teenage girl that's in deep distress and she does the thing that any psychologist has been told taught not to do mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. she does it you know she breaks protocol and she gives her her personal cell phone number um you know because her heart just goes out to her and she's you know in danger and all of these things and um uh so yeah she breaks the rules uh which we've all anyone that's been in that position as a therapist or a psychologist or anyone really working in mental health we've all wanted to do right we've all wanted to do that um anybody that has a heart you know you want to have the kids that you work with you want to take them home with you you know mm -hmm. <laughs> so um so yeah she has that piece and um that's you know that's where it begins really in the very first chapter is that first phone call and that uh, you know, her handing out her uh, cell phone number to Chloe. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's so real. I mean, and, and, and now I understand the different themes that you're always associated with, like nature versus nurture. And, and, and yes. so and when, when you get that, that bigger and better picture of what's going on, you're going, oh, my God, Lucinda is up to something here. <laughs> yes. I mean, that's always, I mean, one of the things that's at the crux of all of the stories and, and books that I tell is, sort of I examining this idea of can a child be born bad, yeah. right? I mean, oof, that's 
you know, that digs at your psyche. So yeah, that theme sort of runs throughout. And there's always, um, you know, the debate between nature versus nurture and every single one of my books, one of our own being no different. Yeah. As that author, when you're putting the words down, now you also think about, you know, that you're on book talk. Do, do you write for book talk or how, how is it that, because that's two completely different things. That's audio versus visual. Yes. Well, so here was the thing that was really unique about one of our own and that I absolutely loved about this project is that because I knew it was only going to be audio, I, I did write it in a different way. A, I knew it was going to be shorter. It was going to be novella length, which always is a different challenge. And then B, I knew people were predominantly going to be listening to it, but mm-hmm. not just in regular like regular audio but fully produced you know and so one of the things um that i think is so powerful um about this book is the calls that happen at the call center because they feel um very first person real time happening now you know you hear the static on the other end of the phone you the sound of traffic the you know um the urgency, all of that. And so this was really unique. And it's why I decided on the story that I did is because I wanted it to work well within this format. And I think it did. I mean, I think um, it far exceeded my expectations. And so far the response has been super positive. So it sounds like other people did too. Yeah, because, you know, people nowadays, you know, we're, we're so used to listening to podcasts and listening to storytelling and things like that. I mean, to, to be on Book Talk, I mean, it's, it just gives you that opportunity to, to, you know, to continue what you love in life. And that is listening to the story and then, and then you know, becoming a part of it. Yes, yes, absolutely. Is it kind of scary for you right now with TikTok in trouble and with, with the uh, the House voting against it today? Because now, I mean, you use yes. it as a business. Yes, yes. It is terrifying to me. Yeah, I mean, very soon all of it could be gone. And I have loved Book Talk. It's been one of, uh, you know, I love that entire community. So for me, yeah, it would be really sad if it was gone. Yeah, you know, there's yeah. been just amazing communities developed there. Um you know, I have a huge reader base there that I love um, dearly, uh, and so yeah. If, and if, you know, so yeah, if it was if it was gone, it would uh, it would really really impact me in a lot of ways. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, fingers crossed, <laughs> it does not you know go away. Yeah, wow, it's it's scary times. As that author, yeah. the, do you still find yourself being the student when these stories come to you? Because you have to learn a lot about what you're going to be writing about. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I am very, very, very much a student. And honestly, it's like one of the things that I love the most about writing, because ultimately, like, I'm just like a super nerd at heart. Like, I would love to go back to school, like, just for fun, you know? So, like, there are some books, like, for example, When She Returned is one of my books that's Mm -hmm. about a cult. And I'm telling you, I could have like researched all of that, like the people that join cults, leaders, their background, all of that stuff. I could have researched and watched documentaries for like years. And finally it was like, all right, LD, you got to actually like (laughs) write the book, you know, because yeah, I mean, I, um, by the time I wrote, wrote that story, I could have written a whole like actual textbook on like the profiles of like people that end up joining cults, you know, because it was just so fascinating to me. Like I'm still at the core of my being, like just fascinated with human behavior. Yep. Um, so and it, you know, and which is, you know, both psychology and writing share that, you know, it's sort of the same skill set in a way. See, I see that as as being a silent wolf. In other words, you stand on the side of the forest and you're observing everything taking place because there's always a storyline that's going to be created somewhere as long as you stay silent. Yeah. Yeah, and watching it, play, yeah, watching watching it unfold and play out for Absolutely. sure. For what sure. what is your writing discipline? What do you are you a nighttime person or a morning person when it comes to putting the words together? Ooh, you know, it all depends. Honestly, it depends on like what phase of writing I'm in, right? Mm. So if I'm in the like creating writing the first draft, um, I really uh, 
so much of that is dictated by like when it's coming to me, right? So that's really like I'm in this just like weird space 24 <laughs> seven. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, sorry to the people around me, you know, but, um, so when I'm in that space, it's different. Now, when I'm in the like copy editing, proofing, you know, the developmental edit, things like that, um, cause you know, sometimes that stuff can be super grueling. Like writers are actually like very dedicated, like people you have to be, cause some of it is grueling. So like, um, for the stuff that's like maybe not so fun, like the editing, yep. I will put myself, um, on more of a like actual schedule, yep. um, just to make sure I get it done, you know, cause there's always a deadline. So, and then I tend to be, you know, uh, do all of that, like in the morning hours. I used to be a night owl. Like yep. for most of my life, I was a night owl. Like ten to two were like my most productive hours. And then I don't know, something changed, and I just flipped <laughs> <laughs> upside down. I don't know. I don't know what happened, but yeah, here I am. So now I'm like crack of dawn. Hello, birds. Let's go. <laughs> <That's Yeah. it. laughs> so where can people go to find out more information about you and give you some love? Oh, so give me all the love. Well, right now, one of our own just came out. So to give you could go uh, buy that wherever you purchase your audiobook. Um, it's everywhere, Audible, Amazon, Spotify, all the channels. Um, if you want to find me, uh, you can look me up. Uh, my handle is Lucinda Berry Author on like all social media. Uh, most of my time is on TikTok, so I'm on there acting like a fool if you want to see that. <laughs> I don't know if you actually want to go there. <laughs> but if you want to, I'm there acting goofy. So. I love it. I love it. I hope you come back yeah. to this show anytime in the future because the doors. I would love to. Oh. I would love to. Yep. Absolutely. This was so fun. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? <laughs> you too. Go slay. <laughs>